We will start with our hands at the heart and just take a moment to come inside with your eyes soft or closed. Inhale through the nose and expand the rib cage. And just let go of any body tension with your exhale. So we're just making a transition to the inside. Inhale through the nose. And exhale. Release any tension from the body. We'll do that one more time. Inhale. And then exhale. And we're going to set an intention to keep the mind gently focused on the present moment by linking the mind to the breath. Exhale the arms down and inhale, lift the arms up. And on the exhale, take the hands down to the floor and just do the best you can. We're going to take the feet back. And then this is like a plank. You're going to bend the elbows and take an up dog. Open up the shoulders and the chest and take another inhale. As you exhale, you can lift your hips. Those of you that want to add a push-up, you can, and then do a down dog. Down dog is an upside down V. You're going to bend one knee and then bend the other. Bend one knee and bend the other. Bend one knee and bend the other. You're going to feel the back of the lower legs, the ankles, and the back of the legs, the hamstrings. Now lift up both heels with your inhale and exhale lower. Inhale lift and exhale lower. And just imagine the neck is getting freer and freer. The hamstrings and the calves are getting more pliant. Leave the heels down and hold, pressing the hips back. Take three, two, now on the one, you can look up at your hands, take a step up to your hands, and take an inhale to go halfway up like you're a table. Now let your blood pressure readjust and go all the way up once it is. Take a bit of a back bend, inhale. Now on the exhale, leave your arms up and press together if you can. Go over to the side. This is Ardha Chandrasana or half moon. You can imagine a crescent moon in the night sky. And that's the image that we're creating with our spine. Keep reaching long like a golden string is attached to your hands, pulling you up. Breathe into the rib cage that's exposed to the sky. As you're ready, let that hand come down to your thigh for support. Cross your foot over your other. Now your feet are crossed. And we're going to add a little nuance of rotation. You can rotate towards the floor and see how that feels for you. Usually it's a little more low back. There's no wrong answer. Just notice. Breathe into the rib cage. Continue breathing in your nose. As you exhale, your belly pulls in a little bit for support. Now, as you're ready, rotate your spine more towards the sky. It's going to usually feel like more of the muscles of the obliques. And just check in with your neck. If it needs any support, you can look straight ahead or down. Otherwise, keep breathing into the rib cage. One more here. Inhale. Now, as you're ready, come back up, reach both arms up, uncross your feet. See if you can press your palms together. Go up and over and crescent moon. This is Ardha Chandrasana. Breathe into this rib cage. Keep lengthening through your elbows. Act like someone's pulling your arms up and over. Someone's pulling your spine up out of your spine, out of your pelvis. Good. Now as you're ready, let that hand come down to your thigh. You can cross your foot over the other and continue to pull. Breathe into this root gauge. If you feel balanced, you can let your eyes close or at least soften. What that does is help your parasympathetic system calm 
So sometimes we can get into heightened of a cortisol state during the day. And so we're balancing the hormones back out. Tapping into that calming, healing nervous system. Rotate towards the floor and still act like someone's pulling your arm. So you're never collapsed in your spine. You're up and over. Beautiful. Breathing into the rib cage. You might feel like there's more low back stretch here. Now add a little rotation towards the sky. Good. You might feel like a little more oblique activity or more uh, shoulder blade stabilizer stretch. Hold here. Relax both arms down the back. See if the breath will expand you more. Wherever your focus is, that's where the energy will follow, your attention will follow. So you can focus on the abdominals, the back and the shoulder, and that'll help increase the area with that breath. We're gonna take both arms up, inhale, feet across, good. Exhale, bend the knees, and then bring yourself down. And if that's all you can do, that's great, but if you can put your hands down to the floor, let your feet go back. Right now you're in the plank, bend the elbows. Take an up dog, stand on your hands. And inhale, on your exhale, lift your hips. If you wanna add a push up, you can. Downward dog. Now put your left foot on your right heel and stretch out that calf all by itself for five, four, three, two. Now let the other foot down and take your right foot and push on that left heel. Neck is soft. Five. Four, three, two, both feet down and press your heels. Five, four, three, two, look up at your hands and take a step or a jump. Now this is like a table halfway up. Now once your blood pressure feels settled, you always want to give it a chance to equalize. Take an inhale, stretch back, and then exhale, open up the arms. So once you're open with the arms like a T, you can take the right foot over the left. Now inhale, and we're going to add an exhale to rotate. So right now your first possibility is to rotate the upper body. That right there is a stretch for helping posture, but if you would like to add on, you can do a one-legged balance at the same time by lifting up your right leg in 90 degrees, letting the hand push on that thigh. This is more advanced. If you want to stick with the other one, that's fine. I'm having to back away from my wall so my arm doesn't hit the wall. So create space. Look over that horizon. It's more challenging with the balance to move the head. Five. Breathing calmly, four, three, keep going, two, take another inhale. Now as you exhale, face the front of the room. If your feet were crossed, uncross them. If your leg was up, lower it down, hands to the heart. Samasitihi is, uh, means homeostasis or balancing the mind, body, breath. So arms out, the option was left foot over or left thigh up, inhale. Add and exhale to rotate. Notice how you're trying not to lean to the side or back. Your right hand can rest on that thigh or you can leave both arms up like a T. Your gaze is following the horizon. Five, four, three, two, 
four. Three. Two. Take another inhale. Now as you exhale, slowly come back to the face, the front of the room. That's it. Hands to your heart, lower the foot. Good. Inhale, lower the hands, bring the arms up and sit in a chair. This is called Utkatasana and it's also called the awkward posture or the strong posture chair. Your knees are in the middle of your hips. Your knees are also in line with this second toe. Your arms are up, but the shoulder blades are down. Notice how heavy your heels are. Your toes are so light you can lift them. And hold five, four. The lower you go, the harder it is. So make this what you need. Three, there's no neck tension at all. Two, take another inhale. And then exhale, stand up, hands to the heart, seat to heat. Lift and spread the toes three times. And if the toes don't move on their own, get down there and move them. And then lift up the right foot. This is tree pose. Your right foot could be on your calf or maybe on your inner thigh. Now at first, tree could be hands to the heart. You can grow your limbs. That's gonna increase the center of gravity, uh, theoretically making it harder. I love to do a little shoulder stretch here. So this is an option where the right elbow's up, the left fingers are working. Jawline parallel to the floor, hold Vrikshasana, tree. You have a calm determination. As you get more comfortable here, you're going to breathe a little deeper. The worst that happens is you do what I just did and you have to touch the floor and you get right back up and you just edit uh, motionless and just keep going. Beautiful. And there's a gentle breath dragging on the back of the throat, warming and filtering the air as you bring that breath through your nose. Take another inhale. Now see if you can reach the arms up, bring the palms together, and go right down the midline till your thumbs touch your heart. Lower the right foot. Sama Sitihi. Same as Sama, so stay in mind, body, breath. Homeostasis. Lift and spread your toes and then add the left foot onto the calf or the inner thigh. This is going to uh, be tree on the other side, so whichever side you did not do. And you're welcome to lift your arms, which is a little harder variation. Even though your arms are up, your shoulder blades are down. You never have any neck tension. If you would like to do that other variation, you could add the arms. Good. And optimal balance, your jaw lines parallel to the floor. Your gaze is soft. Sometimes under stress, the eyes spread wide open and the uh, lids are just spread out so wide. So you're going to give them a bit of softness. So even if balances are new or hard, you're just telling the body everything's okay with the calm eyes the calm breath. You have a little bit of ab tone so that your low back doesn't get more swayed at a girl. Every exhale is a chance to let go of tension that doesn't need to be there, like in the eyes or the jaw. How little effort can you put into the pose? Now, as you're ready, your arms can reach back up. Your palms come together. They come right down the midline. The thumbs touch the heart. And then lower the left foot. That's beautiful. Take the fingertips down. 
Inhale, lift the arms up. Now this time, pass through the squat for a moment. Three, two. Now as you're ready, let your hands come down and they're to the floor. Let your feet go back. You're in a plank right here. Elbows bent, up dog. Lift your hips, you can add a push up. Down dog, hold the down dog. While you're here, if you want to uh, change it up, try to lift up the toes. That's gonna make the stretch harder on the calves or more advanced. Five. So you can imagine you could slide a posted stamp under each of the toes. Four, and nothing may happen if this is new, so it's okay. Three. Two. Inhale, and as you exhale, look at the hands and go up to a halfway up position. Let your blood pressure adjust. Once you feel balanced, go all the way up. Inhale, arms go back. Now on the exhale, let the left arm reach forward and the right arm go back. Now adding on, your right foot can lift and you can hold on to that foot. Very good. If that's too far away, you can use a towel around your foot or just hold that foot in the air like you're a flamingo. For now, your thighs are parallel. Your heel is towards your booty. Your ribs tuck down, your pubic bone tucks up. Take one more inhale in this position and either stay here if you would like to add on, you push your foot into your hand and you're opening up. This is Natarajasana, King Dancer Pose. Take another inhale. Now make your journey your yoga too. So you're slowly coming back. You're lowering that foot like a cat, like a, a mountain lion lands on the floor soft. Now notice how this side of your body is more open. Let's take the left arm back and the right arm forward. The right arm has an imaginary cup of soup in it, palm up. The left hand holds onto the left foot. Stand tall. You have a little tone here in your abs and a little tone here. And just imagine a golden thread is pulling your head up towards the sky. You're welcome to stay here, or you can push your foot into your hand. And this left hip is gonna be very tempted to roll open. So you almost have to steer it down to be parallel to the floor. Both hips are equidistant to the floor. Push that left foot into your hand. Feel that thigh lift, soft face. Calm breath. The calm breath tells the rest of the body to stay calm. Beautiful. There's a soft smile. We're doing all this with a hint of lightness. Take another inhale. Now making your transition, your yoga. Good. Lower that left foot down. Terrific. And vinyasa. So when I say vinyasa, it's that flow of postures. If you need to stay there and breathe, you can, or you can take a vinyasa. Inhale the arms up, pass through ukatasana. This time in ukatasana, lift up your heels. See if you can balance across the toes. And inhale, lower the heels, drop your hands, take your feet back in your plank. You're going to bend the elbows, up dog, look over the left shoulder. Now look over the right shoulder, center the gaze, lift the hips, add a push up, down dog. Hold down dog, 
Press the heels back and try this little extra trick. Bend both knees, lift your sit bones higher, and then re-straighten your knees. See if that added a little bit more stretch. Hold for four. And we'll do another variation to see if that helps you, because everybody's a little different, but try toeing in and the heels are wide. So you're basically pigeon toed here. That opens up the SI joint and see if that helps you get a little more openness in your back. Otherwise, go back into neutral feet. Look up at your hands. Take a step or a jump lightly to get there. Land like a cat if you're jumping. Halfway up. Let your blood pressure adjust. Go all the way up. Inhale. Back bend. Gorgeous. Hands come to your heart. Now, the hands are at the heart, and you can keep them there, or if you would like to change it up, hands at the interlace position at the low back. Lift and spread your toes. Lift up the left leg and take a diagonal balance for stage one, or warrior three is parallel to the floor. Now we are working on balance, but we've put our head in a different position. Hips are level, energize the back leg, and hold for 10. Your gaze is probably a foot and a half in front of your right toes. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Take another inhale. As you exhale, that foot comes down. Interlace the fingers the other way. Open up the heart. Inhale. Exhale, lift up the other leg. Either diagonal as a modification or go up. another inhale. Now as you exhale, slowly bring that foot down. Hands at the heart. Either step or jump out wide. Your fingertips are stretched out. Your wrists are over your ankles. Take an inhale. On your exhale, bring your hands down to the thighs or the ankles or the floor and relax your neck here. Shake out any tension. Pull on the arm, uh, wrist, pull on the ankles, stretching, releasing, exhaling, Now, if you would like to add on, interlace your fingers at the low back and let the arms go overhead. Otherwise, just stay where you were. Every exhale is a chance to let go of tension. Now let your hands go underneath your shoulders and in between your feet. Lift your heart with your inhale. Exhale, pull on the floor a little bit and relax your neck, forward fold. Now we're going to walk over to the right foot and just give that leg some attention for five, four, let each exhale relax tension in the body, 
where we're stretching, but also other places that you might notice the stress, the tightening. Gently walk over to your other foot, your left foot, relax your neck. Bring it back to the center and then let your right hand or knuckles be on the floor underneath your nose and inhale your left arm up like a windmill. Now you can look up that left hand, but it's okay if your neck doesn't like it to just look straight ahead or down at your hand. Act like someone's pulling your arm up to the sky. Try to keep the hips level and upper back stretches five, four, three, Two, bring your left hand down, open up your right arm, windmill, reach tall, place your neck wherever it's safe. You can still soften the eyes here. Inhale. And exhale, let it go. Now we're gonna bend the right knee and then bend the left knee. And that may be all you do is just this little back and forth. A little more. Now if you wanna go all the way down, this is a harder posture, but you're welcome to go down. Otherwise you could stay in the upright long-legged. Uh, this is always fun to add a wrap, but do, do whatever you need. So you could have hands on the floor. You could be upright in the original posture with the legs long. You can add a wrap. Lower uh, soleus is stretching, the calf, the ankle, the left legs and her thigh. If you're doing this wrap, the upper back's rotation, just do what you can. Wherever you can keep your breath normal, if you have to hold your breath, that posture's too hard, back off. Take another inhale. Oh, it looks so good. Exhale, let your hands down. Let's go to the other side. Now, you may just be about 90 degrees. That may be enough. Maybe you're going down. Mm -hmm. Lengthen through that knee. You can add a wrap. Wherever you are, you are in a place that feels good. You're never stretching to a point of pain. And you can use your breath as a way to uh, litmus test that. You're Breath is calm. You're releasing tension. You can shake it out. You can physically drop the shoulders, whatever you need to let go. Now, we are gonna add on the squat posture. The modification for the squat, I'll show you in just a moment. So this is an option, malasana is squat. If that's not going well, or you just look like a modification, you can do the happy baby. Either one, ananda malasana or malasana. And the word asana means seat. So the main purpose of yoga postures is to release physical tensions from the body so that the um, you can sit and meditate. So the whole idea with doing these physical postures is that we're relieving tension that's stored in the body, just from general inflections during the day. Let the palms drop. Excuse me, and yeah, feel that. Low back release, so your inner thighs. So all we're doing is just relieving tensions from the body. You're gently bringing your mind into focus of your breath so that you're releasing the mind from its general habit of chatter. You're, you're calmly bringing it into a place of focus. And it will wander, but you're bringing it back. Mm -hmm. 
I like it. Great. Now, when you're ready, your hands are going to go to the floor. This is going to lighten your load on your legs, and we're going to go to down dog together. Now, in the down dog, go ahead and walk it out. While you're in down dog, I'm going to change my camera view because we're going to do a little bit more on the floor, and um, I want us to have a little bit more intimate connection. If you would like to change your camera, you can. Also, if you would like to take a sip of water, this is the time. Now, once you're in down dog, <clears throat> we're going to shift our weight. So I'm going to lower us down to our belly and let the toes go behind. This is the belly down posture. So what you'll do is imagine there's a piece of ice underneath your belly and you're going to lift up your upper back. And notice how when you inhale, your upper back goes up a little bit more naturally. And when you exhale, you drop just a little. And see if you can do this without any neck tension. This is building strength on the upper back so that our posture is easier to hold upright. These muscles tend to get overstretched and weak with our forward task. Now we are gonna add on, lift up your upper back and let your hands gently be on the floor and they pull you up or push you up. Good, hold this place. Your shoulder blades are down the back, your neck is soft. Belly pulls up. Now, as you exhale, lower yourself down. Now, let your cheek rest and lift up both legs towards the sky. Good. This is hamstrings and glutes. Lower your legs, lift up your upper back, let your hands assist you higher. And exhale. So what we're doing is a movement called a rocking swan. Lift up your legs, lower your legs, lift up your back, let your hands assist. Keep the shoulder blades down away from the ears. Slowly come down. Lift up your thighs and lower. Now lift up your upper body. You're doing great. And then bring your focus back into how does it feel? Where do you feel this? Feel the strength in the legs. Feel the strength in the upper back. Again, we're going to stay up on this next one. Go up and hold and breathing. Five, four, three, two. Now inhale and lower down. Now at any time, if you need a child's pose, take it. We're gonna take the hands behind us like we did in the standing up warrior three. If the fingers will interlace, do that. Lift up the arms, lift up the back. And your toes are off the floor if you can, but if you need to modify, they're back on the mat. Lift up your heart with each inhale. And so you notice this is not an activity we do during the day. You can tell why these areas would get weaker. We don't actively move this way during our day. So this is why I make sure to do these in every class, some type of extensions. Lower your spine and now switch your hands the other way. We're gonna inhale and lift up and feel your arms lift, feel your torso lift, feel your thighs. Now, if your hands don't interlace with each other, just put them beside you, do the best you can. Five, let the breath lead you up. Four. Three. Two. Inhale. And either do that again, same interlace finger position or hands behind beside you, or if you want to bend your knees and hold on to your feet, and it may be that you want to, but you can't reach, so that's okay too. Do the best you can with whatever one you're doing. The uh, impression is that your upper back is lifting. That's the, the theme behind this. 
five. The shoulders are opening, which prevents rounded shoulders. Three, the hip flexors are opening, which normally when we drive, when we work, they're, they're flex. So this one's so good if it's for you. Otherwise, do the ones with the feet down. We're going to relax and do that one more time. The idea is how little effort can you put into it. So here we go. Belly in. Inhale, lift. You see how the whole front body is opening, which is opposite of our daily task. Five, four, three, two, relax. Now we're taking a child's pose, press the hips back. If your knees don't like to flex that much, just leave the booty in the air. This is called a uh, puppy dog pose or you can put your hips down. So I'm gonna show puppy dog pose today. Five, four, three, two, and one. Now come to hands and knees. This is a back stretch. So we're gonna start with cat cow and you're gonna inhale, lift your sternum, lift your tailbone. Now exhale, curl your spine and round and inhale. And just explore how that feels today. If you've been driving or sitting for a long time or doing an awkward movement like oh, gardening or uh, backpacking, just something different or kayaking at the cove in a tandem. So you just notice how it feels. And then you can add on the breath to, this is called hip circles. So you inhale and exhale. So Betty, see if that feels good after your kayaking trip. <laughs> and then go the other way. Sometimes on the rentals, the seats aren't that uh, great. So you can feel after you've been in that boat for over a half hour, but just see. Now I love these because you can have freedom of movement in your pelvis. It's not locked to the floor, but you basically are finding out the little stretches you need. All right, do any kind of movement you need. And if you want to add on, curl your toes under, lift your knees and then round your back and lift your sternum. And this is gonna build arm strength and core strength while stretching your spine. If you don't like this variation or you need to be off your shoulders, you can do the knees down again, cat cow. Inhale and exhale, inhale and exhale. Now lower the knees down, perfect. And then lower back into either child's pose or you can come back to your puppy dog pose Take an inhale, and then on your exhale, we're gonna take the booty down. So just do the best you can with the booty down and the feet wide. If you want a sip of water, or let's face it, coffee, you can grab that. Okay, the legs are wide, the toes are up. If you have trouble seating on the floor, grab a pillow under your booty, left arm to inner right knee, Inhale the right arm up and just see what happens. Go over if you can. And it's okay to move in a in a strat in a stretch. It's not rigidly concrete still. Your breath is dynamic, so you're gonna feel this ebb and flow. Find a rotation that works for you. Usually rotating towards the sky is gonna be a nicer stretch, but find out what you need. Breathe into the rib cage that's exposed. Let your eyes soften. You can do what's called one lung breathing. It's a type of breath where you focus on that whole one side. To help with that, your nostrils are facing that side. You visualize that side of your body expanding. So one lung breathing by letting the, eye, the mind focus on the breath. You calm the hormones. You create a sense of calm in the nervous system. You expand those muscles that are good for uh, increasing energy because they're respiratory muscles, secondary muscles and primary, diaphragm and intercostals. Spread out the ribs by that full inhale. And because the ribs are attached to the spine, you create space between the vertebra 
and that's going to nourish the intervertebral disc. So you can see how each pose has about 20 different benefits. So just trust in the process and do the best you can. You see how you start to break free of the body's initial resistance and it takes about 20 or 30 seconds with those Golgi tendons responding in a defensive tightening and then they let go. So notice how that feels. Go up and let's do the other side. Oh, that side feels so nice and long. So notice how it feels. Hand to the inner knee. Your inhale goes up. And it's like you're just painting a big rainbow. You can make it whatever colors you want. Now, the nostrils are going to be directed toward the top lungs, the top lung, and you're going to breathe into that rib cage. One lung breathing. And just enjoy and have fun and feel the muscles letting go. Bring your mind back if it starts to wander, just gently focusing on the breath. We are going to do a down the middle posture. So as you're ready, come up and then inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, go right down the middle. Now your hands can be on your ankles or they can be on the floor. And just relax into it. Another neat trick is to, I like that, you make your head comfortable. Your hands can double up and you rest your forehead or you cross your arms. And it's okay if you're up here as well. You're mostly just enjoying the feeling on the inside. You're getting rid of the outside world and tapping into the inside world where the healing begins. Accenting your exhales is going to help release tension. So it's okay to have an audible sigh or even a yawn, but just a release of tension. Just notice how you feel, observe, notice. Now, as you're ready, take an inhale and come back up. And you did so well. I wanna show you a different posture. There's gonna be two options. One could be just bound angle, which looks like this, like a little butterfly. Another one is to do frog, and then the frog is a little bit more advanced. Your knees go out and your toes go towards each other, and then you can rest. So I'm going to show you from a couple of views, but this is the frog. You can imagine you're on a really comfortable lily pad. Good girls, you know where you're going, and you're welcome to it. This is the side view of frog, or you can do bound angle. So the inner thighs that we're stretching here are the ones that don't cross the knees, the knees, whereas in the other one, we um, had our legs long and those knee, we were crossing the, uh, we were stretching the muscles across the knees. Relax your pelvic floor here. Make sure nothing hurts. So you're doing whichever posture is good for you. And just sort of rest into your lily pad. 
You can imagine you're in a very comfortable pond with beautiful lily pads and cattails, birds and ducks, and a perfect temperature and blue skies. And you're just resting on your lily pad as calmly as a frog would. Relax your eyes, relax your jaw, relax your abdomen, and just by bringing your focus inside, you're helping the body heal. Take another five, four, three, two, and on the one, gently come back up and pull your shins together. We're going to turn over on our backsides and take the back down. Extend the left leg with your right foot. You gently lift your hips up so you can scooch the hips till they're stacked. Your right knee goes down. Your right arm goes out like a T. Your left hand is helping you keep that knee towards the floor, but you're not forcing it. If there's any discomfort, you can put a pillow underneath your knee or lower your arm so that you can let go. Your gaze is eyes shut or, or soft, but you're looking towards that right hand, your eyes would be, if they were open, in that direction. Now, your inhale is a way to gently lengthen the spine. You don't have to try, it just happens when you inhale. And your exhale releases tension from your shoulders and your chest. Inhale. Exhale, release your upper back in that rotation. Release your lower back. Let your next exhale release your hips. act like your butter melting on a skillet. Notice how you feel. As you're ready, you can slowly realign the body and take your leg long. And take your knee down, twist, your hands on your thigh, your left arm's out, your gaze is that way. Exhale, relax your shoulder, relax your upper back, relax your lower back, relax your hip. go. Just letting every exhale release you deeper into the floor. more moments to release that tension.
And you can also have an image of a sandbag. And you've cut the four corners, so the sand's just draining out into, this, into more sand. Exhale. Slowly bring your body back onto your back. Realign your spine and then take your right ankle to your left thigh. And right there, you could have enough stretch. But if you'd like to, bring your hands through the window and interlace them on the other side. That's another hip stretch. You're also welcome to add on a few ankle rolls here. Toe spreads. Good. Just relax here. Go back to your soft breath. Imagine that your breath is a way to melt the muscles in your hip. Notice how that hip feels. And tight hips can lead to low back pain, so it's also a great way to help keep some uh, pain away. Let's take the other side when you're ready, and now the left ankle goes to the right thigh. That may be your stretch, or reach your hands through your window. Hold on, and uh, if you need to move a little right and left, or move the ankles, you can. Ankles are off the floor now, so you're, um, also it's a great place to spread the toes. Spread, spread, good. And let your eyes close again. Just relax your hips with every exhale. Release more tension. Beautiful. And just enjoy the stretches. You can feel like your eyes are dropping deeper in their sockets, your jaw is soft, your ears relax, your scalp relaxes. You can exhale or audibly sigh to help release any tension left in the nervous system. Keep your mind here, the present moment's all we have. So if the mind drifts to the past or the future, you just gently bring it back like you're calling a puppy dog. Take another moment. Now, as you exhale, I'd like to offer that you do a legs up on the wall posture. And you can do that with a block or a roller under your hip, or you just can put your feet up. So at this moment, your legs or feet are higher than your heart. Your hands can go to your belly and your heart. One hand on your heart, one hand on your belly. And let your eyes close. Inhale through your nose and feel the whole area between the heart and the hand expand with a free-flowing vertical breath here. Just observe the breath that you're gently Without effort, you're filling up that whole space from belly to hand. And at this moment, don't direct where it starts. Just let the breath expand the belly how it will. Expand the heart and then exhale, release. Inhale through your nose. Expand that torso. And exhale, release. And then again, just observe the breath. Inhale, now as you're here, you can just put yourself in the most beautiful cloud and it's comfortable, soft, cozy, and you just are wrapping yourself up in the cloud as if you are the cloud and just feel totally supported on the most beautiful day blue skies all around you and the most beautiful temperature and as you're on your cloud resting you're just floating over a gorgeous high meadow full of flowers ponds 
your favorite animals, trees, lush green environment, beautiful flowers, and you're in a very safe place. And you're supported by nature. You feel the healing sun on your skin. You just take a moment to notice how that feels, how that smells. Maybe you can smell the pine trees, how it sounds with the birds in the background and the mammals underneath, how it feels, the clouds so soft and cozy around your body, the sun on your face, a gentle wind on your cheeks. And just keep that sense of safety and that sense of support by nature as you gently wake up your fingers and your toes and take your time to slowly make your way towards a seated position. Take your time to make your way towards a seated position. As you get into a comfortable position, you can take a hand to your heart and then let your other hand over that heart and let your eyes soften and just sit back in that beautifully supportive, comfortable, cozy cloud as if it's enveloping you like a blanket around your body and hovering above that beautiful field of flowers and the high meadow, the ponds and the birds and the trees, the blue sky. And then just take a moment to feel you're supported by nature and to notice how your mind, body, and your breathing feel. And that is our true inner self, that, that calm sense of homeostasis where we want to be. So just notice that you can come back into that place whenever you need it with your imagination, with a few deliberate breaths, and that you're worth it to take time for you during the day to come back into balance whenever you need it. And you're gonna make that little promise to yourself to come back into the breathing when you need it. Whenever you're ready, let your eyes open and come back into the room with much care and appreciation. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. Bye guys, I'll talk to you soon. See you tomorrow.